Live from the ABC 3340 studios in Hoover, it's the Friday Night Blitz Preview. Now, here's your host, Jeff Spiegel. Well, welcome everybody to our dream come true, the sports team taking over a newscast. Jeff Spiegel here joined by Jamie Hale and Johnny Condon. So give me a word or words that best describe Friday Night Football to you. I'll give you one word, indescribable. Mm. Give you more than one. Traffic and then long lines at concession stands. Oh yeah, absolutely. A lot of fun. We know that. Let's start with 7A Region 3, the Tops of Warriors. Four-year state title streak got broken last year by Central Phoenix City. Call it a redemption tour with the headliners. Sophomore quarterback Trent Seaborn on offense, number 12, a three-year starter. But, man, he still looks like a seasoned veteran. Auburn commit Anquan Fagans on defense. The Warriors are hungry and humble. You go four straight years and win that thing, they start thinking, hey, we're the next ones that's going to be able to do this. And so now they understand what we've been telling them. There's no guarantees to anything. And there are hungry teams right behind the Warriors. Hewitt Trustful, after seven years of knocking on the door of the semifinals, broke through in 2023. This year, they want more. Anytime you can advance that far, I mean, it definitely is something that says something about your program. And, uh, you know, we've obviously been really consistent. We're just trying to bring home that first state title. Robert Evans has the Vestavia Hills Rebels back on the right track. In 2023, they beat Hoover for the first time in eight years and finished nine and three. We're right there with the best teams in our state. Uh, we got to figure, figure out a way to get over the hump in the fourth quarters against the teams that are going to have more talent than us. But uh, we were the three seed in the toughest region and, and we played every single team tooth and nail. And After competing in 6A for 26 seasons, Hillcrest moves up to 7A and they've got a big time quarterback to navigate those region three waters in Bryson Kimbrough. Well, if there's any single one piece that you want, it's your quarterback, you know, and especially when you're replacing quite a few people, you know, he's the guy that calms us. He's the guy that leads us. Uh, he is the rock in our locker room. It's known. No, there's no question about that. As for the Hoover Bucks, Jamie, it's been a rough August for that football team. And something we could not imagine. Eight months ago, Drew Gilmer and Adam Helms were celebrating a state title. There was no other hotting coach or coach's name than Drew Gilmer in December. He finished 81 and 12 in seven seasons with the Cougars, named the 2023 6A Coach of the Year, then left the Cougars for the perennial class 7A power. Our next head football coach at Hoover High School Coach Drew Gilmer. I know when news broke that you were leaving Clay Chalkville to come to Hoover, a lot of people said it would have been safe for you to stay at Clay Chalkville. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's correct, but uh, we don't get in this business for safe. To get Hoover back up to the top, what is that gonna take? It just takes us doing the right things day in, day out. I mean, like I said, we, we got all the pieces here to, to do whatever we wanna do. Uh, because again, at the end of the day, it's not about facilities, it's, it's not about money, it's not about that, it's about the people in the building. And, uh, and again, we got the right people in the building. And breaking right now, Hoover High School's head football coach and a defensive coordinator have been placed on administrative leave. Videos from a Bucks football practice was leaked last Tuesday and circulated on social media. A coach is shown ripping a helmet off a player and throwing it, while another coach shoves his lower body into the face of the player. It's the fact that these tapes get out that somebody knew this was going to happen. Tape doesn't lie, though. I was coached hard at Thompson in baseball. Larry Simmons, Billy Woodham, they never physically assaulted me. They never embarrassed me. You've got all the professional facilities, but it's not professional football. You're coaching kids, and that's not the way to coach kids. Two days later, and the Drew Gilmer era came to an end at Hoover. So did the tenure of Helms. Their controversial behavior led to resignations. At this time, our focus is dedicated to supporting our football players and coaching staff. Players are left picking up the pieces and adjusting to interim head coach Chip English. It's a tough situation, but Hoover does not lack talent. Quarterback Mac Beeson transferred in from Gardendale. Jonah Winston, younger brother of Jameis Winston, will play multiple positions. Beeson, Winston, and the rest of the Bucks have a chance to turn a tough week into a memorable season. The Hoover Bucks are in circle the wagons mode. Interim head coach Chip English has not been made available for comment. Practices have been closed. The Bucks will have their annual fan day this Sunday at the Galleria. We'll see if English is made available then. All right, Jamie, thank you very much. So here's the Alabama Sports Riders 7A poll. Defending champ Central Phoenix City, number one, Thompson two, then Enterprise, Auburn, and there's Hoover, number five, Dothan six, then Mary Montgomery, 
Hewitt and Bestavia, 8 and 9, and the Hillcrest Patriots, number 10. Well, now we turn to 6A, and the big story is a new team in 6A Region 3. Johnny Condon joins us now, and Johnny, the realignment made things pretty interesting in that class. Yeah, Jeff, I don't think I'm speaking out of school when I say that Class 6A might just be the most competitively grueling classification in the state. The talent in 6A football in Alabama is immense, and when it comes to the race for the blue map, well, the chase got even more difficult. It was just over eight months ago when Clay Chalkville upset Sarah Land inside Bryant Denny Stadium to win the 6A state title. And in that eight months, a lot has changed. Starting with the fact that the Cougars have themselves a new head coach in Stuart Floyd. And he wants to make one thing clear, this is a whole new season. You know, last year was last year. You know, that new trophy is being made. It's being held in Montgomery and it's not, you know, last year's trophy is not leaving my office. The strength of the Spartan is the warrior at his side. And for the always consistent Mountain Brook, the secret sauce to their elongated success has always been in the little things. In Mountain Brook, you know, the, the gene pool is pretty homogeneous. You know, it, we're going to get what we're going to get. But what is exceptional to me is, is usually, you know, the unseen, the, the leadership qualities, the, uh, the character, you know, the discipline. Maybe the most talented roster in the state belongs to Frank Warren's Parker Thundering Herd, who are laser focused on finishing the job in 2024. We was almost there. We didn't finish, uh, but we, uh, we left a mark. I think we're almost there. We're really trying to kick the door down this year and let them know that we're here. And then there's the newcomers to Class 6A, the Spain Park Jaguars where after flashing at moments last season, they believe they have the roster to compete at the highest level of Class 6A. Yes, we are going down, but it's still going to be really good football. You're playing a lot of, uh, you know, communities who love their football. So when you, know, when, you, when you play those type of towns and those type of communities, they're going, they're going to get after it. And Jeff, despite dipping down from 7A to Class 6A, Spain Park will keep Hoover on the schedule. One of the best rivalries in our area will remain despite all the movement. Yeah, that'll be one to watch, JC. Thanks. So here's the 6A poll. KJ Lacey and Sarah Land, the number one, followed by Parker and Clay Chalkville. Gulf Shores fourth and Spain Park coming in fifth. Oxford number six, then it's Pike Road, Muscle Shoals, Gadsden City, and Mountain Brook rounding out the top ten. In Class 5A, Ramsey's had a two-year run we don't see often in Birmingham City Schools. 25-5 and five with back-to-back -back trips to the state championship game, a blue map trophy in 2022, a red map trophy in 2023, and a dynamic offensive playmaker returning in quarterback Cameron Keenan. Personally, I just want to be a better quarterback um, overall, be a good leader to the freshmen and the young people on our team and just be that great senior quarterback. Moody made a run to the quarterfinals a year ago, finishing 10 and three. Quarterback Charlie Johnston, a Georgia Southern commit, is back. Leach has big holes to fill on defense to replace Chris Burge and Kavion Henderson. However, the offense should be solid with Connor Nelson returning at quarterback with a veteran line up front. Nelson has plenty of weapons, including running backs ZJ Dale and Grayson Ford. Region 6 got tougher. Alexandria and Southside have been replaced by center point moving down from 6A and Jacksonville moving up from 4A. Five of the seven teams in the region went to the playoffs last year. I think the top four to five, maybe even six, are quality playoff type teams. So it's going to be a battle, no doubt about it. We just came from the best region in the state. You know, last few state championships came out of, you know, between Clay has won the last, you know, two of the last three. And we're not going to face any better competition and a better program than we faced the last two years. Here's the 5A poll. Ramsey number one, Moody two, then Gunnersville, Catholic Montgomery, Clay Central leads Briarwood, who moved down from 6A, center point number eight, the Fairview Aggies number nine, and Demopolis coming in at number 10. All right, still to come on the Friday Night Blitz preview special, Johnny on the 100th renewal of the eight-mile war between Gordo and Pickens County. And can Pleasant Grove's move from 5A to 4A finally unlock the key to the Blue Map Trophy? Jamie Hale has that story next. Uh, taking over a program, you know, it's a lot of challenge, you know, um, you know every day, you know, uh, you know, different things that – that take place that you have to handle as a head coach, but I'm enjoying every bit of it. You know, uh, like I say, it is a different aspect from being a player and a coach. 
Former Winona Dragon, former UAB Blazer, 11-year NFL veteran Joe Webb taking his first high school head coaching job at Jackson Olin. The Mustangs went 0-10 last season. There's a new coach at Pinson Valley, too, but this is not his first head coaching job. James Thompson takes over the Indians. He coached at Pickens County from 2015 to 2017, leading the Tornadoes to the 1A state title game his last two seasons. Then he went to Carver Montgomery for three years. He spent the last two seasons on the Tuskegee coaching staff. Man, look, I love coaching in high school. I started off coaching in high school, so um, I've always loved high school. I knew I would eventually get back into it, just didn't know when or where. Um, so the win is now and the where is Pinson Valley. Thompson's challenge at Pinson Valley creates some continuity. Coach Patrick Nix and son Bo Nix led the Indians to back-to-back -back 6A titles in 2017 and 18. Sam Shade, with some help from senior Kool-Aid McKinstry, led them to a title in 2020. Since then, it's been a revolving door of coaches. Thompson is the fourth head coach in the last four years at Pinson Valley. In the last three seasons, the Indians have gone from 9-4 to six and four, to four and six. The infrastructure is here uh, from a standpoint of Penson Valley. Uh, this place is worn. These kids were all at the parade and all of that stuff, so they know what it's about. So, man, we just got to continue to do what we feel like we need to do to win games, and I think we're off to a good start, man. We got a good team, and guys have been working hard. We just want, you know, a team that the community can be proud of, the school can be proud of, all the alumni. Um, but as far as getting back on the right track, I feel like we're doing the things that we need to do. Anything, anything that happened in the past do not concern me here. Um, we're here now and we're ready to get rolling. And we wish Coach Thompson well. All right, let's talk 4A now. Jamie Hill is back with us. And Jamie, 2024 meant a reshuffling of the deck when it came to many of our football teams. Yeah, and it happens every two years. The HSAA reclassifies based on attendance figures given by the State Department of Education and private schools. So one of the top dogs in 5A is now bringing 5A talent down to 4A. For us, it don't change anything. The competition level doesn't change. You know, it just so happened that I think we're still in one of the tougher regions. Pleasant Grove is in a new classification this season, moving from class 5A to 4A region four. New teams, new stadiums, new level of excitement. One thing about this game of football, it, it, it provides you opportunity to see some things that you wouldn't see, you know, every week and every day. So uh, definitely excited about going into some new places, you know, get to meet some new folks. The folks in 4A region four are American Christian, Fairfield, Holt, Oak Grove, Pleasant Grove, Tarrant, West Blockton, and Bibb County. It's, it's going to be nice to play some new teams, you know, that we don't normally get to play. But, you know, us and ACA still in the mix with West Blockton. And, um, you know, we're excited to just get opportunity to start playing region play. Haven't played Pleasant Grove in a while. Pleasant Grove was voted number three in the preseason ASWA high school football rankings. The Spartans are 66 and 14 in six seasons under Daryl LeBeau with three straight 5A state runner up finishes. And our focus is always on ourselves, you know, and, and we want to chip away to one week at a time. You know, year in and year out, our team looks different, you know, and this year the team may look different from what it did last year or, or the year before. So our main focus is to make sure that we play our brand of football. Last year, Pleasant Grove won 10 games for the fifth straight season, but fell short of the semifinals for the first time since 2019. The hunger remains. Have that, that dog-like mentality. You know, when we say dog, it's not D-O-G, it's, it's D-A-G, uh, D-A-W-G for us. Uh, I mean, you know, that's to be able to have discipline, you know, play with a certain attitude, uh, have a certain willingness and a certain grit. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of our mindset. The region championship could come down to the last regular season game of the year. Get this, October 25th is Pleasant Grove versus Bibb County. That's going to be a great one. All right, look at the 4A poll. The Alabama sports writers have Jackson number one, followed by Cherokee County, a finalist a year ago, and then Pleasant Grove, Bibb County fourth, then Madison Academy, Mobile Christian, Hanley number seven, Dora is eighth, then Anniston and St. James. Well, still to come, we'll share our Super 7 picks. And next, the eight-mile war between Gordo and Pickens County turns 100 this year. Johnny Condon traveled the eight miles between Gordo and Reform to find out what makes this rivalry so special. Welcome back to the Friday Night Blitz preview special. What makes high school football special is the passion of the players and the fan bases. Johnny Condon joins us again. And Johnny, in West Alabama, there are two towns where that passion runs really deep. Yeah, Jeff, when you think of rivalries here in the state of Alabama, of course the Iron Bowl is the first thing that comes to mind. Alabama and Auburn's feud on the football field is known nationwide. But 
What if I told you that there's a high school rivalry in our state that burns even deeper, that you probably have never even heard about? It's Gordo, it's Pickens County, simply known as the Eight Mile War. Gordo Greenway. Uh. I hate losing, number one. I especially hate losing a reform. It's not another game, for sure. It's not. No, it's not. It's just not another game. I think everybody's pretty proud here. Beat Gordo, beat Gordo, beat Gordo. Can't stand him. And if you haven't heard of the Eight Mile War, then you should um, at least definitely come check it out. Eight Mile War. Playing like The Eight Mile War between Pickens County High School and Gordo High School. Eight miles. That's all that separates Gordo High School and Pickens County High School. And before we even get into the football, it has to be known that the folks supporting the Green Wave won't even say their rival's name. They've always been Pickens County High, but we refuse to do so words. They won't call us Pickens County. They'll say those reformians over there. We are the Pickens County High School. Sure. We don't like saying Gordo around here. We don't like any of that. I won't even text that people most of the time. <laughs> Growing up my whole entire life, right, I hated Gordo. Like, could not stand him. To understand this rivalry, you have to understand both communities. And no, when they go to war every fall, it's family versus family. I mean, that's our kid folks now. We go to reunion, we don't, we don't want to be the last in line for the chicken, you know. You win, you first in line. My dad told me ever since I was little, we've always had somebody playing in this game. He told me, you don't ever date a girl from Gordo, you don't talk to no girl, don't talk to people, don't be friends with nobody from Gordo. It just runs deep. Kids are definitely they're aware of it because their uncles played in it, their dads played in it, their moms were cheerleaders, uh, you know, their cousins are on Reform's team. The hate runs deep for a multitude of reasons, starting with what Pickens County people believe is a lack of respect from the Gordo folks, not shying away from calling them little brother. My response to that is, big brother doesn't always win. They know we got the better players, we got the better equipment, we got the better field. You got everything up. When you look at little brother or big brother, it's the family dynamic of it. A lot of them are cousins who talk all year and all week to each other about this game. As these two age-old rivals are set to meet for the 100th time, Gordo leads the all-time series 57-39 with three ties sprinkled in. Gordo has won the last 10 meetings. It's definitely an underdog mentality. Um, I think we spend more time trying to prove to them that they put their pants on one leg at a time the same way we do. It's intense from start to finish, the bragging rights. I know in my time that I will beat Gordo. It's just a matter of when and where. If you don't beat Reform, uh, you're probably going to get a phone call or, or uh, some hate mail maybe. The day of reckoning is coming. The day of reckoning is coming. That's what I would say. Jeff Gordo and Pickens County will meet for the 100th time on September the 27th, and I can promise you there won't be an empty seat in that stadium. Yeah, that's going to be a fun, fun game. All right, coming up, a look at one of the stronger 2A teams. And Jamie, Johnny, and I will make our Super 7 picks. You know, the Super 7 is less than four months away. This reminder, a new season of Blitz Game Day starts Thursday at 6.30 on My68, live from Legion Field right before the Friday Night Rivals game of the week between Ramsey and Parker. A new segment, Hills Hot Shots, features Parker's Naeem Offord and Jordan Crawford. They understand they're not, you know, afraid to play anybody. Um, we just, we just got to do, you know, little steps and, and make everything and not get too overwhelmed with the things you can't control. Tuscaloosa Academy's transition from AISA to AHSAA has been smooth. Back-to-back 10-win -back seasons and spots in the 2A quarterfinals. The Knights are ranked fourth in the 2A preseason poll. The Vincent Yellow Jackets are eighth and Sullivan is tenth. Pisgah ranked number one just ahead of Coosa Christian. And in Class 3A, a big question is, has Piedmont lost his mojo last year in the first season under Jonathan Miller. The Bulldogs lost seven games for the first time since 2005. The good news, they did win a playoff game. They're ranked seventh in the 3A poll. Gordo is number four. The Super 7 will be in December at Protective Stadium. Remember, Brian Denny and Jordan Hare are no longer in the loop due to a possible conflict with preparations for the college football playoff. And when you're talking about Central Alabama teams, there wasn't a whole lot to brag about when it came to the Super 7 last year at Brian Denny. Our only winner was Clay Chalkville and the dynamic Jalen Mbakwe in 6A. 
beating Sarah Land. Otherwise, Thompson fell to Central Phoenix City and the insanely talented Camp Coleman in the 7A title game. Ramsey came up short in the 5A title game to Gulf Shores, who moved up to 6A this season. In 4A, Cherokee County got shut out by Montgomery Catholic 28-0 in the most lopsided of the finals. And in 1A, Cusa Christian lost to Leroy 28-21. Mobile Christian won the 3A title and Fife won the 2A championship. All right, usually this time, uh, Span does the seven-day forecast. Not today. It's the Super 7 forecast. And Jamie, we start with you. Chief Meteorologist right here. Yeah. All right, let's start in 7A. I've got a rematch between Central Phoenix and Thompson. Warriors out for blood and redemption after losing last year as Thompson all the way this year. In 6A, I've got Sarah Land beating Parker. 5A, Moody and Montgomery Catholic meeting with Moody winning its first state title. And 4A, my guy Daryl LeBeau and his Pleasant Grove Spartans beating Mobile Christian. 3A, Fife beating Locust Fork. 2A, Tuscaloosa Academy beating Realtown. And 1A, Leroy beating Wadley. So uh, Jamie's all in on the Spartans right. and the Blue Devils mm -hmm. to make school history. Johnny, how about you? If I pick you and you lose, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm a walking mush. But let's start at 7A, where I got Thompson taking over 7A once again. They're going to beat Auburn. Trey Seaborn's as good as they come. At 6A, all that talent at Parker, Jamie, and Jeff, I just think this is the year, if not now, when. 5A, little bit of an upset. I don't have Moody. I don't have Ramsey instead. Gunnersville over Montgomery Catholic. They bring back 13 starters off last year's team. They're going to run the football. 4A, Cherokee County, one of the most physically dominating teams in this state. They're going to take down uh, Mobile Christian, who's always talented by the Bay. Fife going to roll over T.R. Miller. Miller. And then in 2A, Realtown, no one's happier to see Fife go up to 3A than Realtown. They lost in the state title a year ago. They're going to get it done over Tuscaloosa Academy. And then finally, Jeff, 1A. Leroy, they're going to win it all. They're really good. Johnny doing some research on Gunnersville. So Johnny has Parker making school history with Coach Warren crying tears of joy. Here's my picks. Thompson over Central. Sarah Land beats Parker. Catholic defeats Moody. Pleasant Grove wins that 4A title over Madison Academy. And 3A, five wins. Tuscaloosa Academy breaks through with the 2A championship right there in Pickens County with a win over Leroy. Love the tornadoes this year. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching. Thanks to producer Jenna Winkleman for keeping us on time, to director Dennis Martin and that incredible production team. For Jamie and Johnny, I'm Jeff. Have a good night, good weekend. World News Tonight with David Muir is coming up next.